Hello everyone and welcome to TFYLP episode number 319 recorded February 13th 2019. I'm your host Drawn Land aka Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Anna Pope. Hi, good evening. <laughs> and Jack Bruner. Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, Paul Freeman will be joining us uh, shortly and then Anna will be uh, logging off uh, kind of uh, having to juggle around some schedules today doing a pre-record uh, as this will air on Saturday. We're actually uh, recording this on Wednesday uh, so that uh, I can take a night off and take my girlfriend out to dinner. So <laughs> um, so uh, on Saturday. So uh, we're recording this tonight and uh, we're going to be talking about the Wonderfest reveals and the impact that they're having on the fandom especially one big one it's been talked to death but we're going to talk a little bit about it a little bit more and some of the other reveals and uh and how uh, we feel about those uh what we think the direction the line's going to go from here uh and so forth uh normally we broadcast live uh, on youtube and facebook live and as you can see on both sides we won't have any live comments tonight sad face but uh, you can still comment on this video or go to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TFYLP. Comment on uh, uh, on what we're talking about here. Or you can tweet us at TFYLP on Twitter. Uh, sponsors up there in the upper right-hand corner. As always, CaptureProy.com and Ripped Apparel. Uh, this may be a rather short episode because a lot of this has already been talked about on TFYLP master uh, microcasters master casters <laughs> uh, so uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy this show and uh, uh, maybe you have some input on what our thoughts uh, are on these reveals uh, first off uh, Anna what do you think about what was revealed at uh, Wonderfest last weekend do you want me to just go over all of it, or do you want me to just share the one thing I care about? <laughs> Start with what you care about the most, and then add your two cents on some of the other stuff. I am for me, it's just Black Arachnia. That's what I'm excited for from it, is that I didn't actually expect that we were going to get a masterpiece of her anytime soon, possibly ever, especially due to the kind of improbability of her transformation mixed with the fact that we've never gotten a mainline female character as a masterpiece. Road Rage was the closest thing we ever got and she doesn't count being not a um, show character at all. So um, yeah, I'm super pumped because it looks good. It looks impossible. And um, yeah, it looks like something I would want to have. I am trying to pull up a picture of it real quick so I can screen share it. Oh, here it is. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, we have not seen the alt mode yet, so we don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned by that because, like you said, uh, the alt mode can make or break a figure, too. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah, it, that is a absolutely beautiful toy, though. Um, you got uh, uh, the 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 face sculpt is dead on. The uh, uh, just the proportions look right. The the web thing is kind of it's neat, but I don't I don't really see a point in it. But I, I understand fun. I understand the fact that you know you got your uh, uh, the effects and everything like the like the uh, the siege line that now comes with some effect parts. Yeah, um, and, and I think that's the same thing here. I think it's Hasbro and Takara trying to get in on that uh, market that. Uh, a lot of third-party sellers, not not just third parties, but third-party sellers. You could get like stands and effect parts, uh, like the Tamashi Nation stuff. Uh, you could always get that for you have been for, able to for years. Now it looks like they've finally caught on and are, are starting to include that with the figures. Uh, Jack, what are your thoughts on uh, BA? My favorite part. About this whole thing was not really the masterpieces, but uh, there was one that really stirred it up for me was the new Armada Prime. I'm really excited for that. Um, when I was a kid, because I was brought up in Armada, which I'm pretty sure I'll still never stop getting shit from Rick. 
Um, anyways, um, so Armada was my first series that re- I really got into. I was kind of around for R.A.D., the original R.A.D., but I never really cared for it. So uh, Armada was pretty much my first foray into the franchise, and Armada Prime was my first Optimus when I was a kid. So uh, after seeing this, I'm like, give it to me now, even if it's a, just a test shot. I just want it now. I'll paint it later. Pretty please. Um, that's pretty much it so far. I think the f- next that would come closest would be Masterpiece Movie Megatron. I like the way he looks. Um, but he wasn't I, a Wonderfest reveal, though. Still. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... Like I said, Armada Prime. That was the main thing that pretty much got me excited for the whole thing. So that's, that's you just know, I, I'm, I'm actually screen sharing the, uh, the pictures from uh, T-Formers right now. Uh, and I believe this is the Bendy Prime, the back of the leg... Uh, you can clearly see there are fists. Uh, it looks for it looks like for the uh, for a combined mode. Mm-hmm. Maybe. And the way the waist look too, I was kind of thinking because it's, it's separated. Yeah, I'm thinking this could be a possibility of you know combining with a trailer, which I'm excited for because uh, a little bit of trivia for those who don't know. Uh, when they did the fan vote for the Masterpiece and Star Saber one, the runner-up was meant to be Armada Prime, which I was still kind of heated over that because I really wanted to see how that looked. But, eh. But, yeah. I'm... Part of me wonders, you know, uh, we, we always say that the... Uh, um, that the designs for like the Titan class figures, you know, whenever they did the the poll for Scorponok, Omega Supreme, and uh, uh, what was what was the other one? Fort Max, was it Fort Max at the time? Uh, think... No, it was oh, Tripticon. Tripticon, Tripticon, yeah. Tripticon, Scorponok, and Omega Supreme. Yeah. Uh, er, uh, there, there was somebody who always said that the the designs were already done. It's just, and that we'll get eventually all three of them. Mm-hmm. It's just that, what, which ones was they going to get first? And the fans voted Tripticon. We got Tripticon. Now if we now we're now, getting Omega. Now that we've seen Omega, we know we're getting Omega. I, I just, I'm waiting with bated breath for Scorponok. You know, uh, will he be next year? Knock on wood. You know, I'm hoping he'll still be a headmaster. Um, and you know to have a Titan class Scorponok that could battle my Fort Max, that would be awesome. Yes. Would I be still awesome. think it would be interesting if they made him a Commander class. I know you don't agree. A lot of people <laughs> don't agree, but I do think it would be very interesting just to see. Um, I think his level of complexity would make a good Commander class because I think he'll get a little dull as a Titan. Um, so I think that he'd work well as that. But we'll see. It, it won't happen. It could happen. It won't happen. But speaking of Commander Class, what do you guys think of the nice, full-color, wit in scale with other figures shots of Jetfire we got to see? That thing looks great. It, yeah, it's pretty gorgeous. I like the fact it's, that it looks like it has uh, um, inter- it's interchangeable between Decepticon and Autobot, too. Yeah. <laughs> And it's enormous. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Let me screen share this one. Uh, I believe that's the d- Deluxe Class Star Scream that's uh, in front of it in the picture. And the Deluxe Class Star Scream literally comes up to the crotch of this thing. <laughs> that Star Scream's so, a Voyager, isn't it? Oh, is it a Voyager? Okay. Well, that makes I thought Star Scream was a Voyager. I could be wrong. That's what I thought I heard. Because be Soundwave's there too, right? I think Soundwave uh, and Starscream are in the picture. I, okay, yeah, I, I do see it in the background there. Yeah, and Soundwave's a Voyager too. So yeah, okay, a so, Voyager. Yeah, that thing a is Voyager just huge. To the crotch. Yeah, the, uh, you're probably looking at just shy of of uh, Titan class then, probably for this guy. He's he's really big. He's really big. They say eleven inches. We'll see. Yeah, that's what it kind of looks like. Yeah, from what I can yeah. tell. 
Oh, another one I was also excited for was uh, Brunt. Um, oh, yeah. The vehicle for Trypticon, because I obviously have him. I'm kind of glad that they're kind of doing these characters that you originally had with like the original toys, like Fort Max had Cog, which I finally got him through Siege. Now it's going to be Six Gun. It's going to be rejoined with Fort Max, Brunt with Trypticon, which would be kind of nice. Um, you mean Six Gun with Metroplex? Six, or six Metroplex, Gun would be with yeah. Metroplex. Uh, Cog is already out now with uh, Fort yeah. Max and then Brunt with Trypticon, yeah. Uh, just to have a full Trypticon set, you know, you got the Trypticon, you got uh, Full Tilt that already came with him, which was amazing by itself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then now Brunt. Uh, the tank, uh, and and he actually transforms now. But, uh, mm-hmm. The original, he was just a tank, and you took him apart, and he became bits and pieces in a tower. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Now he's all, all that, and whatever guns you want to give him for your other huge figures, and sure. He's he's uh, junky on Ultra Magnus. You basically tear him apart and <laughs> you can and, put him back together. Put, uh, put him uh, put him back together with uh, as a weapon or something. <laughs> I, I can just see somebody making pictures now, you know, a bunch of Junkions holding, you know, cog pieces or brunt pieces. Imagine combining cog and brunt. We you call, call it? it uh, crunt. Crunt or or brog. Brog. <laughs> brog. <laughs> uh, I, I doubt they uh, people would call him crunt because that, that sounds like a, an insult. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling that arm would get dropped. <laughs> um, so, uh, Jack, what did what did you think of uh, the Black Arachnia whenever you saw it? I saw one picture of it. I loved the way it looked. I didn't. I'm trying to find another one, but uh, yeah, I, so I far I think there I was like... only the one picture, and I think it's uh, that one picture has been digibashed. Well, there was uh, the, like the full on picture, and then a close up. Looked like yeah. a close up of the. The so place. there are two poses out there. One that like we've mostly seen, and another one where one of her arms is raised up just a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Not really enough variation to say that they count as different pictures, but technically, technically they're different poses. Yeah. Like I said, because I just typed in Wonderfest 2019, and I'm trying to find it. So, But yeah, like I said, just from the one picture, I love the way she looks. Yeah, it looks really cool. Of course, everyone's talking about price now because we're all we're scared after Megatron and Dinobot that the next masterpiece Beast Wars is also going to be extremely expensive. Even though she's yeah. little, she's yeah, like well, Cheetor sized. Cheetor, what? How much was Cheetor? Was he like 90, 80 or ninety? Wasn't he? That sounds about right. I think. So I'm getting the reissue off Amazon Japan for about sixty. So that sounds right for. A U.S. retail would be somewhere between eighty and ninety. You got to yeah, pay for import price. And- TF yeah. Source has Cheetor for seventy-five. That's around. That's about right, I think. So I could see Black Ragnia. See, I could see her setting at the. Um, if they rationalize it, if they're going to charge as much for Bumblebee, which we haven't got to yet, as they are, they could charge the same amount for Black Ragnia, and I would be much happier to pay for Black Arachnia with a cool web accessory that you find boring. Um, well, I would just... That it would be for the Bumble. I, I just see it as adding more price to the... Uh, or more more stuff there to add to the price. Uh, you know, if you're going to have... Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to have a, uh, uh, a new toy, I, I would rather have the, the bits and pieces like the web and the fire effects and all that. I'd rather have that optional uh, if it's going to save me some money, especially if it's going to save 10 to 20 bucks, maybe even more mm-hmm. on the price. Because if you think about it, that's how much you pay for like the Tamashi Nations uh, effects and everything. I know I've got like yeah. a, a blast effect that's off screen back here. Um, they roughly run, I want to say, 20 to 30. And all it is is just a few pieces of plastic that uh, makes you know you, you can make like a like something's landing and there's like a blast effect coming up from the ground. Uh, you know, just little things like that can really add to the price. Um, sure. Of course, you know it's got a separate retail box uh, which adds to the price, but still, it's adding to the price is my point, and I'm. 
I'd rather have that uh, that optional, in my opinion. I, I totally agree with that. I mean, it totally makes sense to do it that way. I just, I don't know. I think they stand a better chance <laughs> of selling the Black Arachnia figure at a slight markup to people who aren't that interested in the web than they would to selling enough of the, the web by itself to mm -hmm. justify the cost. So I think they're doing the logical decision, even though your well, idea I mean, it's, is definitely it's, the fan-serving decision. Yeah, well, it's right. It's right up there with like including Spike and uh, and Daniel with um, Masterpiece Ultra Magnus. I, for one, enjoyed that. You know, uh, and yeah. getting Spike. You know, the the uh, the season one Spike, season one and two Spike actually with uh, with MP10 was great. Um, yeah. And now the, with MP44. We see that Spike and Sparkplug are getting a re, uh, a an update, and uh, you know even the little bitty minifigures that's coming with the figures themselves are actually getting updated. Um, you know I, I know that the the price of MP44 has been scoffed at, you know since day one, and uh, you know a lot of people are like, well, just order it off of Amazon Japan. And the the thing is, is here's here's my thing, and and we'll talk a little bit about more about this whenever we get to Bumblebee. But my take on this is that I'm not a hundred percent sold on Bumblebee. Uh, yeah. I'm warming up to Prime. I I see I've seen enough of Prime to know that okay, I'm I'm probably willing to uh, to pay that price because there's not enough about it that. I don't like. I mean, there's mm -hmm. there's elements about it that I don't like, but there's more about it that I like than I dislike. Uh, whereas Bumblebee, let's go ahead and hit that uh, hit that subject right now. Um, uh, how much time you got? Oh, I, I don't have much time. Okay. I'm hoping Paul makes it soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I know you're on a time limit, but uh, um, but Bumblebee. <sighs> Let, let, let's get right out the gate. And we know the uh, they said the suggested retail price uh, was probably going to be what 120. I and, think, yeah. Uh, and I think uh, BBTS put it up for around that price. And um, yeah. Amazon, I think Amazon Japan has it for like 96. So you figure out the the import price to the U.S. It'll it'll be around 110, 120 ish. And if he's yep, no big, uh, BBTS is, uh, has him for one twenty. Yeah. So if he's yeah. no bigger than the original, original masterpiece Bumblebee, that's a lot of a lot of money for such a small figure. And masterpiece Bumblebee is a the first one MP twenty one was a very small figure. Mm -hmm. Masterpiece. And he's I tiny. remember. When I got him, I got him as a birthday present from my husband, and he complained about how much it cost for such a small figure. When we got it, he was like, holy crap, did I seriously just pay this much money for a figure this small? What is yeah. wrong with you? What is wrong with this toy? What is wrong with the world? And it was... <laughs> but, I mean... I understood his pain there. Totally understood his pain. But this is way worse. <laughs> well, if, if you also look at the fact, though... You know, what are we paying for the new... You know, we talked about here a few weeks ago uh, the new Legends class uh, or Legend scale figures that's coming out, especially third-party ones. They average 30 to 40 bucks, roughly, yeah. for a Legend scale figure. Um, so, and, and we don't really scoff too much at that price. Yeah, I was trying to talk logic to myself earlier as I was ordering the new Prowl from New Age... For thirty dollars, and I was like, "Here I am telling myself that it would be too much money to spend twenty bucks on two vintage Beast Wars Neo characters that I want." But I sure jump right in to spend thirty dollars on a prowl that's this big. Mm -hmm. It looks super cool. Um, I, I, I think I'm guilty of that a lot too. You know, it's like uh, I'll, I'll like I'll, I'll I'll not pay that price. You know, I, I I can't afford that price, and then go drop the same amount of money. On a different figure, not even a week or two later. I'm I'm very guilty of that. I'm the yeah. same in video games. Um, like an example, like twenty bucks worth of stubs and MLB the Show, perfectly fine with buying. There's one little mini game on my Yahtzee. 
on my phone that's five bucks. I'm like, there's no way I'm paying that for Yahtzee. <laughs> well, I think what it is is it's putting personal value on yeah. things. You know, I mean, what do you value more? I mean, um, and whenever it comes to action figures, I, with DLC, I can I can understand it. Some games I don't like it enough to buy the DLC, uh, but yet there's other games. You know, like Call of Duty. I want to buy the DLC, but all the like in the new Black Ops Four, all the little weapons and and camos and stuff. It's microtransactions. I give two shits less about that stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I I just want the map packs. I want different maps to be able to play on because that's to me that's functional. I see more value in that. Uh, where and you parlay that into action figures. You know, I want. Uh, you know, I I want one figure more than another. And I see value yeah. in this figure more so over this figure. Yeah. Um, and I think the the where I'm getting the the valuation discrepancy and my willingness to pay that much for a new masterpiece Bumblebee, maybe I would be able or be willing to pay that much for a new masterpiece Bumblebee had there not already been the MP21 Bumblebee that I already have that I'm still perfectly happy with. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's got a bit big of a chest, but he. He's still great. He's still a great him. Bumblebee. Yeah, because if Black Arachne is the same price, I won't even care. $120 yeah. pre-ordered. Done. Like, yeah. I won't consider that even twice because it's just that figure matters a lot more to me than Bumblebee the second. Even though I think Bumblebee as a character matters more to me than Black Arachne. But like you said, we already have one. And we have a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's get to the aesthetics part of it. Uh, you know, what what do you think aesthetically of the new MP45 Bumblebee? Well, hmm. personally, that first picture of him holding his gun got me really excited, um, as it did a lot of people. You went, ooh. <laughs> and then we started to see him rotated, and it's really very much a. I see it as a um, so. In this household, we also collect various anime figures. Um, my husband collects quite a few Revolt Hack. I collect some Figma and those sorts of things. A lot of those figures are made, especially Revolt Hack. And if you ever collected McFarlane figures, those are really guilty of this. Mm. But they're made with joints. They're made with posability. But they're really only made to hold a handful of poses. Maybe one, maybe like five. And when you try to put them in other poses, they look preposterous when you rotate them around you start to realize that you know their hip actually goes way past where the top of their butt should be and it's square Mm. and it's like okay this looks terrible from that side and i think that's the direction they've gone with this bumblebee where i don't feel like we've gone that with other masterpiece figures like Mm -hmm. okay all right i do have the one exception right here on my desk that i'm getting the upgrade kit for it's ratchet ratchet was really bad about displaying from certain um, directions, you know, like his butt. At least he's um, got padding when he sits. Turn out. There you go. Yeah. It's rubber. Uh-huh. But um, most of them, most of them rotate well. Most of them go into various poses well. Even Ratchet can strike quite a few poses with no problems. And I feel like it's a really big change of form to be like, well, this figure is made to be seen from the front, and he can capture pose one, two, and three. And if you try to make him capture pose four, he looks like a absolute disaster with feet larger than he is. Yeah, I, I'll be I'll image. be honest. The first very first picture I saw of MP forty five Bumblebee, I, I, I'm like, ooh, you know, I, it was it was like that picture, you know, of the dude looking at the other uh, the other chick and the uh, the girl looking up at him. Oh, I was yeah. sitting there, I was going, ooh, like that, and then and then I saw another picture of him. I go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally, I mean, it's like everybody talks about the backpack, and, and well, and, and I know our own Robert, he said, well, I don't display my action figures from the back. I don't either. Yeah. But yet, whenever you see all that junk that's like right here, uh, you know, from the side, and, you know, if he, if you just have like a, a, a dynamic pose like, like him, you know, back up against... Uh, back up against the wall, looking like around the wall, it. you're still looking at a whole bunch of kibble junk on his side. I and I have a problem with that. Like that. I have a problem with that. And it's yeah. not it's not just from the rear it looks awful. He looks awful from the profile. And uh-huh. the only way he looks decent is from straight on. 
Yeah. Yeah, and 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 even then, you can kind of see the cloppity feet that he has with the windshield, or I guess the doors where they fold up. I'm guessing it's it's the doors fold up and the wheels fold under to make his feet. And That's what it kind of looks like, from what I could tell. Yeah. Um, I'll see. Yeah. Because I'm looking at BBTS's photos, and that's what it looks like. Is it looks like his door and his front wheel, from what I could tell. Yeah, I'm screen sharing it now. But, yeah, the, that profile, I mean, he literally looks like a jumbled mess from the side. And, and I uh, have to admit, as a fandom, we're used to it in some ways. Like, every figure does look better from certain angles, even if you go for Precious Siege... And you turn it to the side, it looks worse than it does from the front. From the back, it looks even worse. But not as much worse as Bumblebee does. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, 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 the one thing that I can laud the, uh, the MP Bumblebee on is the fact that it, got the, it looks like it got the colors right. He's, uh, it looks like a really good shade of yellow, like the mm -hmm. proper shade of yellow for the, uh, for the, um, for the animated bumblebee and the the gray looks like it's the proper shade um of course he's got the big dumpy chin but of course yeah. the cartoon had that too um we could go all day about cartoon aesthetic versus a blend of cartoon and realism uh me i i think i lean more toward a blend of both i like a little bit of the cartoon yeah. but I also like a little bit of the realism that that the mm -hmm. masterpiece had Go ahead. So let's say theoretically, just just to put this out there, Takara started to say, okay, we're going to do a character we haven't done yet. Let's say Jazz to make a lot of people happy, including myself. And we are going to put out two Jazzes. We are going to put out realistic, taking marks from the toy and the cartoon Jazz. But we are also <coughs> going to put out the cartoon accurate Jazz. Two different Jazz figures. What? Do, how do you think we ever react as a fandom if they literally started trying to service both desires at the same time instead of slowly switching from realistic slash toy inspired to cartoon inspired after you know ten years? You you got a good point there. You know, I mean, there's elements of the toy jazz that I that I really really like the mm -hmm. realistic you know car, and then there's elements of the animation that I really, really like. You know, I like the fact that he has, the animation has no doors. Uh, he's got like a, a decent proportion, you know, and he's got the robot or the car chest, but then more robotic proportions than the big clumpy feet. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I like that. He's not derpy, I guess is the best way. Whereas if you look at the toy proportions uh, or the more realistic proportions from a realistic car mode, he's his proportions are off. You know, tiny, tiny head, big, big chest, little bitty waist, big, 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 big feet, you know, uh, as proportion to the body. Um, I, that's why I say it. It would be a hard choice, but I think in the, in the case of Jazz, I would probably lean more toward a fully animated uh, Jazz over the toy because just the proportions would look better. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that's weird to say because we're always... Um, you know, offing the cartoon about how disproportionate the you know, the characterizations or the the character designs are, um, but if if you want a you want something in a physical form, it's going to have to look good one way or the other. Yep. So, uh, Jack, what's your thoughts on that? I think you pretty much nailed everything on the head. That's pretty much it. So, yeah. They can't make us all happy, but maybe, maybe between the two bees, everyone will have a bee they like, yeah. possibly. You can make some of the people happy some of the time, but not all of the people happy all of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's an old adage, you know, and I think it applies here with the bumblebee. Um, but, and, and I do see several people online, you know, well, I, I think it's great. Um, and, you know, and they're, they're, people are happy. Oh. Let me get this out there right. People are fine with that if that's the way they they feel about it. Uh, me personally, I, I don't agree with it. 
you know, uh, but I'm not going to sit there and call somebody stupid because they think MP45 looks way better than MP40 or MP21. Uh-huh. You know, that's that's a matter of opinion and taste. Yeah. Um, but I think the the large portion of the fandom that I that I see are poo pooing all over this MP45. You know, one for price and two uh, the, for the way it looks. Yeah, two for the way it looks. <laughs> Um, I would actually be willing to pay that price uh, again. I'd be willing to pay that price if it if I found it to be a vast improvement over what we already have. You know what's funny to me though, if you think about it compared to other characters, like right now, I don't have any of the third party jazzes because we have a good chug jazz that I think represents the character just fine. He's really cool looking. I think he captures the character while he's a neat toy. But when you think about Bumblebee, as many Bumblebees as we get, as often as a Bumblebee is made in every set, really it's just the MP and this guy that have actually captured the character decently. Yeah, like, that's, that's really it. True. This is only like our third one. And that's that, cl- actually... that Classics Bee mold that you held up there, uh, Classics Bumblebee mold, um, there was another third party company. Was it Art Feather? Yes, I was about to say. Years they ago, made, they they basically they made took the classic mold, but they gave it the VW shell. Yeah, yeah, they they kind of reshelled That's it. That's neat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the company for the longest time that was considered one of the best uh, third party bees out there. And the funny thing is, is that the package, when they were making it, they did not care about trademark at all. So they took actual animation cells, actually said character names, and they just pretty much told Hasbro, if we get sued, then okay. (laughs) Because I remember, I think it was Pia's video review, and that's what it pretty much was on the packaging, was they had all the Hasbro stuff on it. They were mentioning other figure names. They, They just called them Bumblebee. They didn't give him any like third party name like uh, <laughs> st- Stinger. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was just I'm like, okay, that's a good way of getting sued. Well, it's kind of <laughs> like on fans' toys, uh, uh, the Swoop. You know, all the other fans' toys, Dinobots has Iron Diebots, Iron D I B O T S on on the box, but they actually had a uh, a typo. On on the uh, on the fans toy sword, which is the swoop, it says Iron Dinobots. Ooh, <laughs> they got close. Yeah, it says Iron Dinobots on it. I've, I've still got the box around somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> I heard about that one. Ooh, uh, looks like it might be about time for me to tag out. Yeah, Paul said he's booting up his computer. So Anna, I know you've got uh, some uh, uh, some engagements to uh, to attend to. So go yep, freshen. I have to go educate minds. Yes, go go freshen up some minds and, and twist them in, in appropriate manners. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, I can handle all that. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll make sure to bring my biases to class tonight. Why not? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Take care, hon. All right. Thank, uh, thank you. Thanks, we'll see guys. You Take care. Time. Have a good night. See you later. Um, Paul Framel will be on here very shortly. Uh, like I said, he's, uh, he's booting up his computer now. And... Uh, and everything. So, in the interim, Jack, uh, what are your thoughts? I, do you? I know you've got the MP21 right there on hand. Uh, are you even inclined to get the MP45? Most likely not. I, I mean, like you said, I have the 21 right here. I'm good with it. I think I only got it for like a whopping 60 bucks. Um, and this, yeah, this, this all new I one wanted was roughly, a good max. Roughly the uh, twice the price. So yeah, um, I mean, I wanted a masterpiece Bumblebee. This is what I got. That's what I wanted. I'm like, if there's another one that comes down the road, like what they did with MP10. Now they're doing three primes because I mean, I originally had MP01. Somehow lost that. Long story. Mm-hmm. Got MP10, and now that they announced the new prime, I'm like. Do I even want to? Most likely will. But I don't know yet. But Bumblebee, I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just, I honestly just was not a fan of... I, I'll be honest. If, if 
MP45 goes down in price, and we see him for roughly the price that uh, the first MP Bumblebee. I'll probably buy it just to have that version of, uh, you yeah. know, a, a tuned version of the character. Uh, but, like I said, I, I find MP21 tune enough for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, Pretty yes, much. his his chest is a bit big, but... Doesn't have a big, puffy chin. Yeah, I... The, uh, his face just looks off to me. I know, I know it's I know it's accurate. A lot of people have screen shared uh, in com uh, a comparison shot between the animation and MP45 face, and it's almost dead on. Uh -huh. But I, it, in, in a real real sense, and I think Bobby Skullface. I don't know if you saw his uh, recent uh, no. video about MP45. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things where. Uh, you know, we keep clamoring for a animation accurate toy, but yet when we get it, we're disappointed in how it looks because it's based again on an animation that's inaccurate to begin with. You know, so uh, you know we can't really gripe that much about the price of, uh, I mean, or the the look of MP forty five. Simply because of what uh, the source material it's based upon, but mm. whenever you get it in hand, it just looks off, and you you still got to maintain that uh, that that base that this is based on something that looked off to begin with, and we wanted it that way as uh, in a general sense as a fandom, mm -hmm. uh, and I think Paul probably already knows exactly what we're talking about right now. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure the fan base wanted it to look like that, but uh, it's what we got. So what, it's what almost like with? like Takara was like, "You want it bad enough? Here, take it. Choke on it." Well, I mean, who wanted another Bumblebee? The other one was quite good. Everyone agrees. It's like, hey, that's that was cool. I think when you see them, like when I've seen the photos of the old one with the new one, I yeah, it looks great. But but you know, it's one of those things I didn't know that I didn't like certain things until i saw the new one yeah like there I, there are some improvements i i would get i would say but not the, a, uh, not enough to really warrant wanting it that bad the, yeah the feet and the face really i i'm not one to, to poop on toys that i haven't gotten but like i have to kind of you know i, I kind of grit in my teeth on this one a little bit yeah don't well, have it yet we'll wait till we get it in hand well, what what do you think about the profile, uh, the junk in the profile? Uh, it, Not great. It doesn't look great. I mean, I would have been happy if maybe they had uh, allowed the doors to come over and at least cover up some of the side kibble. Uh, and that way, whenever you pose him from the side, he looks okay. I'm yeah. fine if he if he got all this junk folded up in the middle. He wouldn't be the first Transformer that we've bought. W certainly wouldn't be the first Masterpiece that we've bought that had like a whole bunch of crap folded up in the middle of it. Uh, Rodimus. Well, Rodimus <laughs> is like that. Sunstreaker. Right, I should say the newer Rodimus. Sunstreaker's a bit like that. You know, um, so yeah. it wouldn't be the first time that we've gotten a Transformer that had a whole bunch of a mess folded up in the middle, but at least they do a decent enough job hiding it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. I just, uh, I don't, I just, I, I wonder if they rushed this a little bit, but I also don't know like what they could have done that would have made it better. Cause they were going for that weird aesthetic. And I, f I felt like this is the first time they've really been like, Hey, let's make the alt mode cartoon accurate. Like they really focused on that, yeah. Which so is so weird. The only reason I can think they did it is because now they can finally do a cliff jumper and a bumper that like fit the mini bot aesthetic. Because yeah. you know, cliff jumper is a freaking Porsche. He's not a squat little beetle. Yeah. There was there was that third party toy that came out that really made it work, which I was like, wow, that's that's amazing. But uh, yeah, I'm I mean, I guess. That's I've got, think uh, which one is it? The Ocular Max, the one, uh, um, I can't remember what its name is right now, but I've got the Ocular Max version of it. It's the one that's got the weird, uh, weird torso. Uh, 
I but think I saw everything that. else on it looks decent to me. Uh, and then you have the uh, X Transboth Toro, uh, where it had like this enormous backpack, like MP45, uh, and uh, and a whole bunch of stuff is like folded up in the middle. Uh, it mm-hmm. it looks the closest to MP45. And if right now, if you're wanting to go for MP45 and a third party cliff jumper, I'd say X Transboss Toro would fit right in with MP45. Was I mean, it Hellion that you were thinking? Yeah, of Hellion. Or? Yeah, that's the one I got. I, I actually, Hellion. Yeah, I actually bought it off of uh, uh, off a of Christian, and mm. uh, it, it it it's a fine toy though. I, it looks pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, it, pre- it pretty much copies the MP21 mold, right? It's just that's like that's what no, it looks like. Yeah. No, it it Re- transforms. Reshelled? No, it transforms completely differently. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it has some elements, you know, like you know, the doors do kind of fold around to make the cl- uh, the club club foot, but outside of that, there's it's it's completely different. Mm. But yeah. uh, bumblebee, wow. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's that's like the the white elephant in the room whenever you talk about Wonderfest. Uh, you know, we of course. We've already covered Black Arachnia, but since you uh, you just got on, I'll I'll let you give your two uh, two cents on uh, um, on the Black Arachnia. I mean, it was a big it was a surprise. I love getting a surprise at uh, these toy events. Uh, I saw a lot of people angry about um, some female parts on that toy. Oh, the nipples yeah. are very prevalent. I think. <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess it really depends on the lighting and which photo you're looking at. But the ones I looked at, I was like, "Hey, guys, isn't this like the spitting image of the model?" Yeah, like, yeah, that's what I'm I not, was kind of thinking of too. So, I mean, maybe they'll get some of the feedback from. You know, I don't know what the Japanese fans think. They might be like, "Yes, <laughs> this is exactly what we." It's want. so kawaii. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like, if they get any of the U.S. feedback, uh, maybe. They will just. I mean, it seems so easy. It's it's still a resin model. They could just like sh- you know smooth it down or something, mm-hmm. make it look a little less pointy. Um, I, I, I'm wondering how far it along was. it has. Uh, you know, if they've got the resin model, I wonder how far along it has to be at this point before they can say, "Well, we can't change it now." Is it too late? No clue. That's that's probably a more of a Rick question. Yeah, I could see him. Giving you more of a clear answer for that, yeah. But I mean, it's pretty far along. That spider web accessory looks amazing, and uh, I mean that. I God, I just wonder how expensive that thing's going to be too. It, is that going to push two hundred dollars? I don't know. Uh, we we were actually talking about that when uh, Anna was on. Uh, you know, if if you go, uh, you know, my thing is, and I and I'll. You know, as the viewers and listeners are are, are seeing this, I'm not going to bore them by saying it twice, but just to fill you in, I personally think that adding accessories like the web accessories and the blast effects uh, adds additional cost to the toy yeah. that I personally feel should be optional. You know, if they want to offer those kind of things, offer them separately. So that way, you know, instead of a hundred and twenty dollar toy, we can get the toy for a hundred, you know, and and pay twenty bucks for the for the optional effects kit or something, uh, and and you can offer way more in a separate kit, rather mm-hmm. than and I, that I would think and make make it more value, uh, to uh, to add to the toy, or or save it for the plus version or something since everything seems to be getting that these days. Yeah. yeah. I'm a, I love the accessories myself. It uh, gives lots of display ability, and to these days, like playing with your toys is pretty much taking photos and putting them online. And it, I think they understand that, and so that gives you, you know, with the multiple faces and the blast effects, it, it gives you, um, it gives the people that really are into that like a lot more playability when they're messing around online. I don't know if you saw the recent. Uh, there was like a U.S announcement of streak or yeah. maybe it was Canadian and it had like literally like a hundred photos with it of, of streak with all the different blast effects instead of just like four or five mm-hmm. like it usually does and uh, it just showed like how versatile like those accessories can be but it does make the you know it I think that it's not a huge cost to add those those pieces but they can like bump up their profit by adding them 
Yeah. Like it might only cost them an extra 25 cents to add a little blast effect, you know, to to 10,000. Well, pieces. it may cost them that much, but you know, how much right. are they uh they charging cuz you know everything everything added adds to the cost. Bucks. You got tooling yeah. costs, you got material costs, packaging costs, and then they they factor all that up and then and then multiply that times probably 600% to make any kind of offer, uh, any kind of profit off of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, that's why I'm saying, you know, I would rather have, uh, I, I, I too do like the, the effects, uh, but I would rather have them optional and buy them separately. You know, and, and even if they're from an official source, you know, okay, these are official Takara, uh, Hasbro or Takara uh, effects kits. You know, you can use them universally on Siege, Masterpiece, what have you. Um, well, that would be very cool. Yeah. Especially with, like, the Battle Masters. You know, like, I don't want those crappy little Micro Master guys, but I want those little blast effects that come with them. But I don't want to pay f five, six bucks for, like, you know, an just, explosion. Just two <laughs> explosions or something. Other, yeah. 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 So, I, I, you know, I'm trying to agree with you here, so... That's that's where that's where I'm at. So. All right. Um, so we've talked about Black Rack now. We've talked about the Elephant Room uh, Bumblebee. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the other stuff. Uh, we I know we mentioned uh, the Skyfire already too. Uh, Jack talked about the uh, the Armada Bendy Prime. Uh, yeah, that's a good. Uh, one. No, Can't what about for it. Star Convoy? Another big surprise. Yeah. Like, just wow. And they're, they're really getting their use out of molds in ways I that I think are smart. Is that, I was kind of surprised. Is that the power, the power of the Prime's prime. uh, leader, uh, leader class Prime retooled? Yeah, that's what it is. I could I could definitely tell because if you look at the chest between the original Prime and the Star Convoy, you can really see it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the legs, the, the legs, the shoulder pieces, kind of, you could kind of tell. That. But yeah, that was... Um, I'm obviously just basing it off my memory, but uh, yeah, there was. It's a pretty d damn good retool. It's close. And that uh, the combined mode of power uh, power of the primes uh, Optimus was actually I thought it was really good. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, and, and the truck mode. Aside from the back of the cab, I I kind of dig. You know, the trailer, you know, closed up fairly well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but uh, and the Orion Pax robot was okay, but the the back of the cab, if they had just done again, you know, I, I'm going to reference Bobby Skullface here because I, I love him to death. I love his reviews, <laughs> uh, and he he something he stated on uh, on a recent review of one of the Siege toys. It's like Hasbro does a great job of getting you three quarters of the way there. Uh, you know, it's like they they almost get it. But then they just cheap out on something, and it just kills the toy. You know, uh, and well, maybe I'd say that, I, that truck mode suffers from whatever masterpiece Bumblebee suffers from right now. Yeah, it's it's like it's a mess. Yeah, they, uh, and, and maybe it's because we're jaded on a lot of third party companies are going that extra mile and giving us, uh, you know, toys that cover cover up kibble well, hide kibble, uh, you know. Uh, and giving us that little extra bit of quality, you know, for the longest time, if we wanted third-party effects with the toy, third-party toys was where we was the only place we were getting it at. Now Hasbro was like, you know, Hasbro and Takara is like, okay, we're going to get in on this action too, and they're they're, you know, it's 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 another one of those things that okay, we're paying attention. They we you, we know they're paying attention uh, because this is not a new idea. It's been done for years by third parties and like I said Tamashi Nations and all the uh, all those other uh, companies um, but now Takara's getting in on their piece of the pie you know they're saying okay we're do we can do that too um, but you know it's one of those things where if they just went that extra mile they're already going that extra mile by adding more paint more molded in detail um, but Whenever it comes to design, they they still cheap out on design, and I think it boils down to parts count. Uh -huh. If they... I, I always I always blame parts count, and and the thing that a lot of people don't think about is deadlines. They have they have like this has to be in by Friday, 
whoever you are employee. If you're not done by Friday, it doesn't get done because they have all these, you know, they have long lead times because they're making probably five figure quantities of this stuff or maybe even six. So like when you, when you hit, when you're dealing in that scale, like you do throw things out the window just to get the job done. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I understand that, but maybe if, if they get like a little bit more lead time on something or, okay, uh, you know, let's ax a couple to a couple figures from a wave just so you can spend a little bit more, an extra day or two of mm -hmm. R and D on this extra guy. Can you add, uh, in, and the money saved from axing a couple molds, uh, you know, okay. Can you add a side panel that will cover up all this back kibble and just close together and make it look like a complete cab? Yeah. You know, um, it, I just that's the thing that uh, that that is constantly irritating me with the official product is you you constantly got that one little thing that is like you know it looks great but then that one little thing that's just like glaring you know for so long they were doing uh, doing that with all the hollow bits and in, in very visible places uh, now in siege we see them covering it up so much and then along comes impactor. You know, <laughs> it, yeah, <laughs> it it it's annoying. It 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 can be. I mean that I saw a lot of a lot of my friends bitching about impactors legs, and I'm just like I I just I would never even see that it, the way the way I look at the like I, I would just not notice that right away. I just think it looks like a cool. It he, looks he like an impactor look cool. to me. He does I'm look happy. cool. He does. Oh yeah. But you know when I, when someone brings it up, I look. I'm like, okay, well, you're not wrong. Like, there's nothing in the legs, <laughs> but it's also a twenty dollar toy, so I can I can take it personally. So, uh, let's see here. We got the uh, the Skyfire, the Star Convoy, uh, Siege oh, Prowl. Oh, go ahead. Could I mention something about that Skyfire? Sure. Or, well, it's Jetfire, so whoa, that's probably important. Um, the oh. Japanese one. Is like twice as much money as the U.S. one. Now this is what? news to me. I have not heard. heard yeah, that. they the Japanese one is like a hundred and sixty dollars. Why? And the, I mean, in you know, in yen, and whatever the yen equivalent is, it's about a hundred and sixty bucks. And the U.S. one is supposed to be, I think, seventy nine ninety nine was the MSRP because it came out. Mm -hmm. They were at, on IGN or wherever that was revealed. They had the MSRPs with it. And uh, Omega Supreme was one sixty, and I, and I believe the new Commander class was eighty dollars, which is you know thirty more than fifty. But in Japan, they're like, "Whoa, no way! <laughs> this is an expensive toy. It's huge." So that's it's kind of strange because usually it seems like most of their pricing has been like in cahoots recently, except for that Jetfire. Mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. Just something to I, point out. You know, do you think that they might offer a little bit more with that toy, or? Offer something different. Oh, uh, to, I mean, to justify it, the increased price. If it was three years ago, I'd say yeah, but I I think it's the same. I mean, there's like photos out and everything. So, what well, it does come with uh, blast effects for his uh, his backpack in jet mode. It looks awesome, but um, it's just the price is completely completely out of whack comparatively. It might be just. Japan says no. We can we can know we can get this much money for this toy from the fans. And Hasbro like, well, we got to hit the price point. That's the reason we made it was to get to an eighty dollar price point, and we're sticking with it. Yeah. And if you screw yourself on uh, on making it too expensive to make, then well, that's your fault. <laughs> and kind of, yeah. Maybe that was. Maybe that's what it was. It uh, does look pretty large, though. It's like you know. Yeah, it, it looks like it's. Not uh, it's just shy of being Titan class. Mm. Weird. <laughs> They're wanting to put something out there to compete with with Fan Toys Phoenix, I guess, because <laughs> that thing is. Uh, I, I, I believe was it what was it twenty seventeen that came out. I, 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 I think so. When we did like our year end uh, year end uh, reviews and toys and everything, I believe Fan Toys Phoenix was either one or two, number one or number two of my toy of the year. I think that's what it was, yeah. It's got a fun transformation. It nails it in both modes. 
Yeah. What was so, that other jet fire that was a total oh, Kronos. dumpster fire? Yeah, that was uh, uh, Kaka Toys. I mean, Daka Toys. Uh, <laughs> now, now. <laughs> I was just talking about the toy, not the company, but yeah. I'm just not hoping the that company. the new jet fire is better than Kronos. Oh, I guarantee I think, it. I guarantee <laughs> it'll be better than I Kronos. I think of all the videos I've watched on Kronos, I think there was only one person I think I saw actually like it. Dawn. I mean, yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Headmaster <laughs> Dawn. I bought that toy. I like it. <laughs> and then, I, I then Diecast, burns, uh, Diecast takes it out back and burns it. <laughs> <laughs> he got Fast Toy Phoenix and he burned Kronos. Okay. Literally burned it. <laughs> I th- actually, I think he, he set that up as more probably just the box he burned, but yeah. still funny, though. Um, uh, Siege Prowl, I think, was probably one of the most underwhelming things that I saw in the uh, the line. He he looks decent enough, but yeah. in a line that is known for better paint apps, this guy looks pretty plain. He does. Yeah, it's like it's just the black, plain. the yellow, couple splashes of red. I'm actually, trying to pull up a picture of it. Um, well, oh, there we go. I kind of there is a lot of paint. Face. There's a lot of paint on his shins because they're translucent. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it's on top or off topic. Topic, but if they do like a repaint, I just wish somebody would do. Um, blue streak or silver streak sometime because I'm still trying to make up for the Combiner Wars one, especially oh. when they only had, you know, they they released Smokescreen and Prowl in the main line, but for Silver Streak they only did the. Well, up, so since they got this base mold, I don't see them skipping out and. Uh, I mean, it it's easily a straight up. Uh, you can straight up repaint it into blue streak, yeah, and then add on like a bumper piece and uh, and spoiler for and a spoiler for smoke screen. So I just want a blue streak now because, like I said, I'm that's the main thing. I, I was kind of I had that at the back of my mind, but I couldn't think of it at first when I first saw Pro. I mean, I like the way Pro looks, but if we get a blue streak, that'd be a okay with me. Yeah, I mean. Uh, Whenever I saw the toy initially, I'm like, I, 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 I kind of dig the design of it. It, it's like, if you could take a Dotson and make it look more alien, that it yeah. nails that look, um, and it, it, it maintains the the G1 aesthetic and robot mode. I, I dig that. But now that we've seen it, uh, I, like I said, in in a line that is known for better paint apps and more paint apps. This guy looks like he's the bastard child of the of the of the wave. I mean, he uh-huh. got the shit stick on. <laughs> well, what about Chromia? We they didn't show it, but like that doesn't look too exciting either. Yeah, well, I'd say there probably every in every way there's at least one toy that that caught the the brunt. You know, uh, <laughs> Power of the Primes Cutthroat out of the out of the uh, the Terracons Cutthroat. Got cheaped out on with uh, you know no pins and stuff in the in the bird head and neck. Oh yeah, uh, oh, you know, okay. uh, and me. he was easily the cheapest one. Uh, and Power of the Primes, uh, the Predator King set, Rampage. It's like they got to him. It's like ah oh, fuck this guy. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Prowl kind of looks like they did that with same the same thing with him. Uh, and I, I hate to say that because Prowl is like one of the. He's up there in one of the of the top tier characters. You know, he's like just under Grimlock, in my opinion. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, maybe maybe it's like a wave thing, and it's it's kind of I don't know if you watch the toys that made us, but they talk about how they they got paint apps and all the toys by making Snake Eyes just black. Maybe that's like Prowl's fate in this wave. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we know that's that's happened since since the beginning. So I mean, everything, every toy, there, uh, every wave. You know, you have like this allotment of money, and you know, whenever you're lo- running low, you know, you spend all your wad on on the first two toys, make them amazing. The middle toy is like, yeah, it's it's pretty darn good, and then the last toy is like, okay, you get the, you know, you're the tiny Tim of this bunch. 
please, Mr. Scrooge, can I have some more? <laughs> <laughs> I, I need some more pay tabs, please. <laughs> um, but it, it you know, it, did, it did look okay. I mean, what's that? They, they did show, I mean, so Prowl, not impressive. We're, we're all kind of agreeing, I think. But they also showed Brunt, which yes. is not this wave. It's like a later wave, and that looks pretty right. significantly cool to me. I brought it up earlier. I'm excited for that because I'd like to complete my trip to Con. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. I, I'm just, just like how Cog completed my Fort Mac. I'm just sad though that because I wanted to be able to make Cog because I knew the play pattern whenever uh, whenever he was first revealed. They they said the play pattern basically you could take him apart and turn him into all kinds of weapons and everything. And I'm like, great. Now my Titan class Fort Max can actually have a freaking rifle. Well, he can't make a decent enough rifle. <laughs> you know, yeah, you can yeah. add some like arm cannons to him and everything. That's at least something. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm just sad that I didn't, uh, you know, I, I wasn't able to make a, a, a decent rifle out of COG for Fort Max. I might have to do some tweaking to see if I can try that. Yeah. You you can do it. You can do it! <laughs> I had a feeling that was going to come up, too. <laughs> you can do it! Um, so, Wonderfest overall, um, how do we think it will impact the fandom as far as, uh, from a masterpiece standpoint first? Uh, how do you think... Uh, the the MP forty five B and the re revelation of masterpiece Black Arachnia. Uh, how how will that affect the masterpiece line going forward? I know it's a far ranging question, but yeah, it's going to empty some pockets. Is what it's going to do because all this stuff is supposed to come out this year in the fall, according to some. Some like you know Japanese September, I believe, is what what they said for some of it, wasn't it? Yeah, that's when that's when MP44 comes out. So like, okay, you want to buy that and B and Black Arachnia and how? Like, what is going on? Well, like, they, at they least can't... they're at least they're softening our wallets by putting Beast Megatron out earlier this year. <laughs> well, he's late actually. He actually doesn't close. He makes the gap between that time period and Megatron like even worse. And yeah. it's like, it's supposed to come out by now, I think. I think it was in Yeah, it's supposed to have been out this month, but I think they pushed it back to April, I think. I think that's what it was? Man, I mean, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a little worried. Like, people are going to have to pick and choose. Even Take people that a mortgage don't, out on their house. Yeah, even people that don't want it. Like, they, a lot of people don't have $1,000 to spend on toys in a month. Because that's, that's I, the reality. I certainly don't, yeah. No one does. Like, that's insane. I do in bowling, but it's not in toys. <laughs> it's just gonna be it's just gonna be crazy I, I, I don't know what to think about it. I mean I hope that they don't do that and I hope they spread it out like I'm sure B, B's coming out and Streak's coming out I mean all that stuff yeah Masterpiece Streak too like yeah. the, that anime one is I'm, awesome. I'm kind of hoping that the Masterpiece Streak well, when's it scheduled to come out is it also uh, September I'm hoping that it's at least I mean, like, June I'm thinking I'm hoping May or June what? The information is out there. I, I, I don't want to mess up my Skype by looking. Well, I'll but, look but, up here. I, I'm looking at uh, BBTS. Hopefully, I'm pretty sure it's that. in the fall. Maybe they're just. Maybe the strategy is just get all these expensive things out. July 2019 for uh, streak. Really? Wow. Yep. Maybe, That's maybe what BB, BBTS estimated to arrive was July 2019. Okay. And that's so. is that the nineteen MP nineteen plus or eighteen plus? Yep. It says masterpiece MP eighteen plus streak with collectible pin. Woo! This body does look good. <laughs> oh, I, I guess I mean if there is a strategy around like pricing and timing, then maybe they're just trying to get a bulk of product out before the holidays, so that. You know, it doesn't sell right away, but it will sell throughout the holiday season. Yeah, you know, it's a little risky, I'm, <laughs> a little I'm risky from a business standpoint. But I'm sitting here looking at the MP18 Plus streak, and I'm like, you know, I, I, I really, 
whenever I did my collection call uh, a couple of years ago, I needed money uh, because I was out of work for about a month and a half, and I wound up selling some stuff, you know. Uh, and I started in my masterpiece because that's where I had a lot of value uh, in my collection. And I'm like, okay, uh, a lot of the duplicate molds I can I can get rid of. You know, I can get 80 to 100 bucks for some of these guys. And, you know, uh, the Masterpiece cars, I think I had them at like 60 bucks. Um, and a lot of the duplicate molds like Smokescreen and Red Alert, you know, th they were they were expendable to me. But mm -hmm. whenever it came down, I ha I'm like Prowl, Prowl is staying because he was like a lieutenant. You know, I've, I've got to keep my Prowl. And then I looked at Blue Streak, and I'm like, Blue Streak was the first, yeah, he was, Blue Streak was the first Autobot car I bought as a kid, I got as a kid. Um, and soon after that, I got Jazz and Wheeljack. Uh, but, uh, but Blue Streak was that very first Autobot car. So he had, that character has sentimental value to me, even though he's like a, tertiary at best character pretty yeah. much um, <laughs> and I, I, I i'm again like with mp21b i'm perfectly happy with the version i have but damn that mp18 plus looks pretty freaking good mm -hmm. it, it looks, looks like pretty it's, freaking it's, good he stepped right out of that episode the, the, the face the, sculpt i think nails it uh, the, yeah they updated the face sculpt on it he's more he's more than just a repaint yeah, that's that's what's that's what's interesting about it, and it, those those blast effects look like he stepped right out of that episode again, where he shoots Thundercracker and Starscream and like mm -hmm. messes them up real bad, yeah. <laughs> where they have to go get new parts. Like, I don't know. I kind of re if I remember that, it's nostalgia. It's cool. It is. All right. Um, so we know we're we're we know that the effect on the fandom is going to hit us financially, but. Yeah. Um, as far as the masterpiece line as as a whole, what do you think? How do you think MP45 and Black Arachnia will impact the line? I mean, uh, as as a whole, do you think that fans will uh, latch on to this and say, "Okay, this is the new norm," and buy the crap out of it and help the line continue, or will it be one of the first nails in the coffin? Do you think it'll it'll mark the end of what we know as masterpiece? Um, is, is you got anything? To, you got anything to say, Jack? I'm just trying to think of a good response, so I'll let you go first. Well, I think Black Arachne is going to be a winner because people love that character. Mm -hmm. there's, the, there's a dude in the fandom that changed his name to Black Arachne. Legally oh, changed his yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Elite. So he's definitely getting it. <laughs> um, I guess I, I don't really think that fundamentally those toys make like are any different than any other release. I, I'm more worried about the Bumblebee and how that affects it going forward. I, I almost feel like the ha Hound and Black Arachnia were, were done or finished or in the works before this Bumblebee was. Because we saw it so late. And well, it was hell, we've known so about late. Hound for what at least six months now, mm -hmm. and he's not. We, yeah. He doesn't even have a designation number yet. It probably has something to do with the Bumblebee movie success, wouldn't you think? Like they're like, oh, Bumblebee is the thing again. Let's yeah. keep him going. But I mean, just the sense, the the idea, the weird, <coughs> wacky hundred one eighty. I feel like they did with the design of Bumblebee, and especially with like focusing on that car mode. With to, to the um, detriment of the robot mode, which is debatable, obviously, but that's kind of how I feel it's going. Like the, they focus so much on making him a penny racer car versus mm -hmm. a legitimate bug. Um, that is what I'm like. Whoa, is that the shift right there? You know, is that like MP44 to MP45, and like Hound is the last one of the current like style of masterpiece. So that. I guess that's the that's where. I, to answer your question, I think maybe. And I'm afraid. I'm, I'm worried the Hound you. might be the last one. I agree with you, and I'm very worried that that's that's the case. You know, if we get a Trailbreaker, he'll be more like a. Uh, you know, a cartoony-looking truck. truck. Yeah, he'll be a cartoony-looking truck rather than 
than the the Chevy Trailblazer, uh, Blazer, I guess, and or Bronco or whatever he was. I forgot what it was. Um, I actually, what, yeah, the T Toyota Helix, yeah, um, or Hilux or whatever, how you pronounce whatever it. it was, yeah. Um, but you know, I would rather, you know, and I even said this to Anna, you know, I, I liked when the masterpiece aesthetic was a blend of realism and animation. You mm-hmm. had a happy medium. You had some, you had enough design cues in the robot form to make you happy and identify with the cartoon character. Uh, yet the vehicle form was realistic enough. You're like, damn, that looks like a pretty, pretty damn good VW bug. That looks like a pretty damn good, uh, uh, Corvette. You know, Masterpiece Tracks, I love Masterpiece Tracks. Mm-hmm, I know a same. lot of people crap on it because it's got some design issues, which I don't disagree with, but I think overall it's a really nice toy. Mm-hmm. Maybe they just thought, like, if we're going to redo Bumblebee, why would we make it look like a bug again? There's already been two Masterpiece Bumblebees that turn into a VW bug, and someone in the room was like, make it look like this cell of animation and everyone's like great idea <laughs> without really like thinking it through well you know even though it has a uh, a penny racer look they still had to okay that with vw and yeah. i am amazed that vw gave them the green light on this because it took <laughs> how long to get the license from vw just to make mp21 yeah uh, well, i know, mean once once you build the bridge like it's a lot easier to get to get across it in the future, so jazz. Are we going to get that realistic jazz? Oh yeah, I was because I was just thinking, didn't they? Didn't Takara went through some trouble with one of the car makers in there? Well, uh, just... BMW or, or no, or is it BMW or is it VW that owns Porsche? I believe it's it's VW and Audi. Yeah, yeah. So, so now that they've got the VW license, it one would stand to assume that they could also possibly make a Porsche, uh, you know, car. But yeah, now if they're going to lean more toward the animation, uh, yeah, I don't know if he's going to look as good as I would like him to. Me neither. You know, I, I, am I going to be happy with my downbeat? You know, so... I mean, I like to keep the faith, but, uh, you know, it's just a weird time. I, but I bring on I bring on change whenever you know like I champion that like they're doing something different so yeah. but I wish they would have finished the all the characters that we wanted before they really yep. you know, twisted the knife <laughs> yeah uh, real quick uh, siege how do you think it's going to be impacted down the line from what we saw here uh, I, I me personally I think it's going to be continuing of the same like i said you know i, I think prowl kind of got the butt end of the joke there yeah. uh but uh all in all i think it's continuing well the big surprise i think honestly uh outside of the bendy prime and the star convoy which we really didn't see those characters coming but we didn't really see a new size class coming and i think yeah. that right there opens up new possibilities you know, so this Jetfire Skyfire, is he a one-off, or is he going to be the first in a line of commander-sized si- uh, toys? And if so, what toys will fit in that commander class? That's what I was actually going to look at now to see what could possibly fit. You know, Anna said... Cybertron my- Starscream! <laughs> Anna Either said, ways. much to my chagrin, you know, a Scorponok. I really hope Scorponok yeah. is Titan class. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, what else uh, could are, are we looking at? Maybe tidal wave. I could definitely see actually. Now that yeah. Paul says it, that because I love wave would be dope. I love the original because I had the Energon, so it was like the neon they have a green tidal and wave white. that actually has articulation. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. You know, it's like it had the design was like like spot on. I love tidal wave, but yeah, his articulation was junk. I mean. Yeah, like I said, Tidal Wave, Armada Starscream, I can kind of see. Or not Armada Starscream, Cybertron Starscream. Um, That'd be a big bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's so, like, a top-heavy, you know? Like, he's, yeah. like, wide, you know? that would Okay, be, uh, I'm going really to throw big. one out there. 
uh, and it's not too far fetched because we got um, his uh, his uh, uh, I guess equi Autobot equivalent or maximal equivalent uh, equivalent in Power of the Primes. Uh, we got, we've already got Optimal Optimus. What if we get a Transmetal Two Megatron in Commander class? Mm. Ooh. That'd be pretty pretty intense. Also be very yeah, big. Kind of see. It'd be very big, but also, could you imagine? I mean, they got the instant repaint with with Cryotech. Yeah, be a, a, an exclusive somewhere. You know, so I I wouldn't I wouldn't put too many eggs in the basket of of multiple commanders, especially since it's like a new size class. This might just be They're like testing the waters, to try to see how it plays out. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I like to think of the. These, with Siege and like the Studio Series, how they're working, I'd like to think of the size classes more as price points now than than actually size classes because of stuff like Studio Series Jazz. Everyone's like, it's a basic. I'm like, well, it's still twenty bucks. So mm -hmm. that that's why it's a that's why it's called a deluxe. So you know, the, they might not all be big like Jetfire. They might be just more complex or more intricate and yeah, not like, have like any Siege. of those. See, Any Shockwave is by no means a Voyager in size. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you mean a leader? Er, yeah. Yeah, he's like, like a head shorter <laughs> or something yeah. than Optimus. Well, I mean, I, I've literally got I got Shockwave standing next to uh, to Voyager Megatron uh, on my shelf, and he's like, comes up to his shoulders. Shockwave comes up to his shoulders. It's like... Dude, you're a leader class. <laughs> yeah. Now, granted, I don't have all that junk on him, you know, because I don't like all that junk on him. But I just, yeah, I'm the same way. I didn't like the way that looked. All the armor. Yeah. I guess that's the way to call it. Yeah, it's weird. It's the movie effect that that toys yeah. are getting now. You know, he he kind of has that that movie uh, the movie look whenever he, you add all that junk on him. I guess. Um. I believe that'll do us for our uh, Wonderfest uh, opinions and, and coverage. Um, I do want to point out that uh, this was a pre-recorded episode, so that's why we didn't have any live comments on each side. Uh, and I apologize for that, but, you know, like I said last week on the podcast, once in a while I like to take a time off to spend with my girlfriend. So, uh, you know, even though Valentine's Day is Thursday... Or it's tomorrow for for us on this recording, but uh -huh. Saturday it will have been last Thursday. This past Thursday, um, I won't get a chance to celebrate it until Saturday night. So, um, yeah, I'm going to take that opportunity. So that's that's why we're pre-recording now, as um, you should. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, as always, if you love what we do here on TFYLP, uh, up at there at the top of the screen, we got a little thing called a Patreon at patreon.com slash tfylp uh, help us continue uh, each and every month uh, by your support by your monthly support uh, we can continue to provide this great podcast uh, that you've enjoyed today uh, and hopefully it's have enjoyed for quite some time uh, we're starting to pump out even more content than ever before um, through this, uh, we've now started TFYLP microcasters, hosted by our own Lucas Bockelman on Monday, or I'm sorry, on Tuesday nights uh, at 10 Eastern, 9 Central, live on Facebook. Uh, so go to our TFY or TFTalk.net Facebook page, like and follow it, uh, get notifications for whenever we go live on there. This podcast here will be broadcast both on uh, on Facebook Live and YouTube. Uh, so, uh, you'll get the regular podcast, you get the microcasters podcast, which is a very focused, um, podcast. We focus on like one specific toy. I know this, uh, this past week we did, uh, the brave X Kaiser's Dino Geist. I did a, uh, an unboxing of a vintage, uh, brave toy to kind of give everybody a, a look at what the line had to offer back then and if you're a, a fan of vintage generation one toys um, and are interested in that type of uh, the type of design aesthetic um, check out that episode you might be interested in brave dino guys um, and as always you can uh, 
uh, subscribe to us on iTunes and audio platforms all around. Um, and if you are also doing our Patreon, you get something very special. At least a couple times a month, we put out a full episode of TFYLP After Hours, which is a uh, recorded uh, podcast. It's off the, cu- off the cuff. You know, we talk about Transformers, movies, whatever, whatever is on our minds. Uh, but it's us as uh, Transformer fans and fellow nerds like yourself uh, talking nerds. about <laughs> talking about stuff that in, uh, that we enjoy the most. Um, you know, it's very uh, very candid. Uh, I know uh, Rick Alvarez on the very first episode that we did on uh, on there, he did like a a little. Uh, tour of the update of his uh his little man cave that he's got going on oh yeah i remember that yep so uh you know we'll do stuff like that from time to time just talk about things and uh but it's exclusive only to our patreons there's no way to download it um and you have to be a patreon in order to get uh these shows all right now well, sign believe- up yes sign up sign up please even if it's just a dollar a month it's uh, it helps us um, you know you can go as, as little as a dollar up to a hundred dollars a month if you can afford please that. sir do you have some change <laughs> please mr scrooge do you have some more um clink, 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 clink. <laughs> all right guys uh i believe that'll do it uh, as always check out our sponsors and uh paul you have any closing comments uh I don't think anyone talked about Gold Soundwave, but it looks awesome. And that was at Wonderfest. Oh, yeah. 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 Titans Return. And, and, the, and, the, uh, and the three new repaints of MP10. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what is that like? What? That mold will never die. That mold will never die. <laughs> to me, those those two things were the most exciting. Those shoe primes and the gold. gold I, I, I'm, I'm kind of interested in at least one of the shoe primes, but... I was also in, uh, interested in the uh, 7-Eleven Prime and the Eva uh, Eva Prime, but I didn't get either one of those either because they're just way too damn expensive. They're like, the like only the, primes I was like interested in is... I would love to have a bait prime, but I'm not going to pay that much for one. Well, the you, only primes you, I was interested in it was the original, Shattered Glass, and the Nemesis. That was it. <laughs> well, these Nike Primes are, are likely to blow the bait ones away as far as... Ooh. Cost and difficulty. Well, because they actually come with a shoe too, don't they? I do. no, those shoes already exist. Oh, and I, I know that because my tenant at my apartment has a bunch of sh- bunch of them. He already has the, all those shoes. <laughs> wow! I still wouldn't mind a new pair of shoes if it came through <laughs> with a transformer, since I need a new pair. Please, with a a car? thousand bucks on your feet. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you next time on TFYLP. Good night, everybody. See ya. Toodaloo.